Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. I am a part-time online reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. And in this video, we're going over what sold on each of those platforms from October 16th through October 31st of 2022. And hallelujah, they are so much better than the last what sold video. It was such a relief to have more sales this time. I've recently accumulated some car bills, some medical bills, so having very low sales was kind of freaking me out, but I am happy to report that they are much better. Not fantastic, but definitely better and more on par than what I'm used to. So starting on Mercari, I had five sales. The first sale was a lot of 11 Disney VHS tapes. These were the classics. So each of them had little black diamonds that said classics on the side of them. Apparently they're more sought after, but honestly not for a ton of money. So I decided to lot all of these together. They were my own as a child and I no longer have a VHS player in my home at least. My mom does and I was able to test them all thankfully, but I was ready to pass them on to someone else. They sold for $27 on Mercari. I did offer free shipping on this item because Mercari still does not have media mail as an option. So I paid $10.47 in free shipping and off they went to their new home. Next was a new with tags Charter Club Thermal Fleece Shirt and Pants Pajama Set. This set sold for $23 and it sold within two or three days of me listing it. Next is a pair of earrings for my Via Trading Amazon jewelry lot. The brand was Jard Me, and it was a pair of blue glass crown stud earrings. These were a beautiful, beautiful color blue. And when you tip them to their side, they had a silhouette of a crown and they sold for $12. Next was an Assets by Spanx Black Shaping High Waisted Shorts. These were free to me. They had a lot of interest on all platforms and finally they sold for $15 and that was an offer that the customer sent to me. And then the last thing to sell was a vintage jewelry set. It was a red, white, and blue rhinestone bracelet and clip-on earring set. And this set sold within one hour for my full asking price of $18. So of my five sales of Mercari, I had $95 in sales. Fees were $13.86. The free shipping I gave out for the VHS tapes was $10.47, giving me a profit of $70.67. And my average sale price for each item that sold was $19. Very, very happy with Mercari these two weeks. Remember the last What Sold video when I had three sales on Poshmark? I had... 20 sales on Poshmark this time. Who knows why, but I am super thankful and I hope they keep on coming. So first up was a Talbot's Petite's gray wool signature fit straight leg pants. These were a size 10 petite, I believe, and they sold for $20. Next was an Athleta purple and gray yin yang two in one skirted leggings. That was the style name was the yin yang two in one. I sourced these off of Thread Up and they sold for $24. Next is a super, super chunky necklace, like very, very heavy necklace too. So it was a brown velvet woven beaded ball chain bib necklace. This necklace had so many things going on. There were dangles, there was velvet woven in, there was a chain, there like it was it was a lot. And like I said, it was super heavy and it sold for $15. When I visited my mom last month, she gave me a bunch of her blue willow china. She has been collecting this for a long, long time, but she no longer has a use for it. And instead of it sitting in her curio cabinet, she decided to part with some pieces. I took them and listed them. And the bundle I'm gonna go over is actually from an Instagram follower. I'm not sure if she watches my YouTube videos or is a subscriber, but if you are watching, you know who you are and I can't thank you enough. So this was a bundle of two items of the Blue Willow or Willow Blue. I've literally seen it both ways. China, it was an oval bowl and then also a larger oval platter. I'm not actually sure if they went together as a set, but I can definitely see them being used together. This wonderful friend of mine bundled the items. I do have a 15% off discount on my Poshmark closet if you purchase two or more items. So she automatically got the discount and the bundle sold for $39.10. 
The next item to sell was a Forever 21 utility jacket. This was in like a faded rusty red color and it sold for my full asking price of $18. It did have a lot of fading on it, but no like major flaws or anything like that. And that was from my Helpsy outerwear box. Next is a vintage FTD avocado green textured bowl. It did have the date of 1975 on the bottom. I'm not sure if it's actually from 1975 or if that's when the company got started, but either way, I did know that it was vintage based off of my research and it sold for $14. And I've had this bowl for about two years. I probably wouldn't pick it up again. Next was an awesome plus size bundle that the person bundled themselves and I sent them an offer. So it was a Talbot's striped poncho cardigan. This was navy blue and white. It did have a small hole up near the shoulder that I repaired. The next item in the bundle was a logo by Lori Goldstein purple plaid shirt. And the last thing in the bundle was a pair of Torrid boyfriend jeans. The only thing I sourced by myself was the logo by Lori Goldstein shirt, but the other two items were from wholesale boxes from other companies and the bundle sold for $58. Next is a Gap black hooded cropped down filled puffer vest. This also came out of my Helpsy outerwear box and it sold for $16 with discounted shipping. Next is a Leah Sophia smoky gray large glass rhinestone chain necklace. This did have a slight repair to the chain, but it's in the back so you couldn't really see it. I did obviously notate that and it sold for $11. Next is a pair of Nua Tags Level 99 Beige Linen Blend High Waisted Shorts. I sourced these from ThreadUp's Outlet Center and they sold for $28. Next is a light brown sunburst pattern boho western belt. There was nothing on this belt to say it was leather. The outside definitely felt like leather, but the inside, the part that goes against your pants when you're wearing it, had this very soft lining on it so I couldn't tell if it was leather because I'm used to seeing like the raw leather inside. I gave my best description and it sold for $10. I've had that belt since April of 2019 so I love to see those old items go. Next is another bundle of the Blue Willow China from my mom, sold to the same person that purchased the other bundle. And this bundle was a set of three egg cups. Two of them did have cracks in them, but the customer told me that they were going to plant little succulents in the egg cups, so it didn't really matter if they were cracked, which I absolutely love that idea. And also a Blue Willow serving set. It had a salt and pepper shaker and then a fork and a spoon. And these two items sold in a bundle for $36. Next is another item from 2019. And I don't even remember where I picked these up, if I picked them up or if they came out of like a reseller mystery box. However, I'm very happy to see them go. It was a pair of Bitten by Sarah Jessica Parker and they were a pair of drawstring flare jeans. They definitely had like an overall 70s look to them with the larger pockets in front. They did have a flare to them. They did have some very minor staining and flaws, which I did notate, and they finally sold for $10. Along with my mom's Blue Willow China, she also gave me some of her Morton Salt items. This one was a vintage Morton Salt utensil holder or canister, and it sold for $15. Next is a Wild Fable New with Tags Purple and Black Ditzy Floral Velvet Dress. I sourced this from a local discount store, and it sold for $16. I just realized that one of my neighbor is doing yard work, literally, every time I sit down to do a video, someone is doing yard work. So I apologize if you hear the leaf blower in the back, it is distracting to me. I hope it's not distracting to you. Next up is a Coldwater Creek blue, super soft leather elephant coin purse. I sourced this from ThreadUp's Outlet Center and it sold for $20. Next up was another awesome bundle. I had a lot of bundles this time, which I'm not used to. So it was a vintage McCoy smiley face planter also a vintage McCoy smiley face coffee mug, and also a vintage new and sealed cruel kit. As you can see, this bundle definitely had a yellow theme to it, and they sold for $54.40. 
Next is a lot of two vintage red and black pot metal decorative boots. These were given to me for free. I really didn't understand what the use of them were for. I did a Google image search on them and there was a lot of different kinds that pulled up, but I did see that a lot of them were little containers to hold long matches and they had a little hole that you could drill into the wall, but mine didn't have that. So I think they were just decorative or maybe they were little planters, but anyway, they sold together for $9. And then the last item to sell was a pair of Madewell earrings. These were a gold tone, semi-precious stones, swing statement earrings. The customer and I definitely went back and forth on a price on these. I had them listed at 30 because I really didn't find any other Madewell earrings that looked like this that were currently for sale. So I thought maybe they were a little bit rare. The first offer from this customer was $10, which I was like, no, 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 no. We countered back and forth. Finally, she sent me another low offer. I declined. And then the customer came back two days later and offered me this price of $18, which I did accept. They apparently really wanted these earrings and I hope that they enjoy them. So of my 20 sales on Poshmark, I had $446.50 in sales. $92.85 in fees. I gave out $12.19 in shipping discounts and my profit was $341.46 and my average sales price for each item that sold was $22.33. Much better than last time. Moving on to eBay where I had 19 sales. The first one was a heart rhinestone silver tone pendant necklace. This came out of one of my various jewelry lots that I've purchased throughout the years and it sold for $8. The next item to sell was a Malore red leather braided woven belt. It had kind of like a wavy effect to it. The customer wanted to return the item, which I do accept returns, but the customer is responsible for the shipping back to me. And after all of the fees and all of the shipping and everything like that, I still made a profit of 41 cents off of this return. And I'm going to relist it and hopefully it will sell for more next time. The next item to sell was a vintage Joseph A. crochet neck blouse. This sold for $13.49. Next was a Talbot's Petite vintage green herringbone blazer. I absolutely love this blazer. It actually fit me really well, but I don't go anywhere that I need to wear blazers. It was an excellent, excellent condition. It came out of a Cozy Threads Talbot's box and it sold for $30. Next is a new with tags Van Heusen blue button front shirt. This sold for $10 and I think it came out of a thread up men's rescue box. And something interesting happened with the sale. When the customer received the item, they wanted to return it. But by the time I got into my email and I wanted to see why they wanted to return it, the return was closed. I'm thinking maybe the customer either changed their mind or they realized it wasn't really worth it for a $10 item to send it back. It's kind of what my thinking would be as a buyer. So hopefully they can make that shirt work for them or they'll probably just end up donating it or giving it as a gift. Next up is another Blue Willow item. It was a set of salt and pepper shakers that came with a little metal caddy and it sold overnight for my full asking price of $19.99. And they did each have stickers on the bottom that said made in Japan. Next is an Olivia Blue Maternity Teal and Gray Color Block Blouse. This shirt did have one small hole in between one of the seams of the two colors that came together. I did notate it. I honestly probably just should have fixed it myself, but I purchased this back in early 2019 when I wasn't as confident with my sewing skills. So I left it as is and the customer purchased it for $4.50. Next up is a pair of vintage sunglasses. This was the designer Givenchy or Givenchy as I like to say. And it was a pair of large round tinted glasses. They did have prescriptions in them. I did notate that in the listing, but here is a tip for listing on eBay. Do not say that they are prescription because that will flag your listing and they will remove it because you can't sell prescription items on eBay. But if you use the term corrective lenses, that usually does the trick and will not flag eBay and it'll let your listing alone. These were so cool, very, very retro. I purchased them for $1 at a flea market and they sold for $18. 
Next is a Brighton Pewter Pebbled Leather Braided Handle Purse. I purchased this off of Whatnot to resell and it sold for $40. Next is a lot of four Juicy Couture sample perfumes. These were all just like the little small vials that come in samples and they sold for $6.50. My cost of goods was very low for this because I bought a whole box full of sample perfumes and I've been slowly selling them. So I was very happy with that small but mighty profit. Next is a Woolrich Tan Embroidered Leaf Zipper Knit Sweater Vest. It had these beautiful teal colored leaves all around the zipper. And this actually came from an estate sale where the homeowner was a smoker. It was not advertised as that, so I had no clue when I walked into the house. I soaked it the best that I could. I think I washed it a couple of times. I did say in the listing that this did come from a smoker's house and I tried my best to get rid of the odor and this sold for $15 and I did get positive feedback. So I think I did a pretty good job of getting rid of that smoke smell. Next is a lot of Crew Cuts earrings. These came from my J Crew and Made Well jewelry box from Cozy Threads. I only have a few pairs left, which is awesome. And this was a set of three pairs of earrings. It was a pair of butterflies, rainbows, and flowers, and they sold for $10. Next was a pair of vintage chunky clip-on earrings. They were black and gold tone. They had enamel on the outside, and they had a pattern of either a cross or an X, however you wanted to look at it and they sold for ten dollars an interesting fact about this when my items sell and go to los angeles i'm always secretly hoping that they're going to be in like a movie or a tv show sometimes i will search for the customer and what do you know this person is a costume designer and they have worked on some pretty popular tv shows so that was very exciting and maybe i will see these earrings on the big screen someday Next was an LEI pink belt. It was decorated with grommets throughout it. It was a size large and it was a medium width and it sold for $14.99 and that was my full asking price. Next is another free to me item. This was a vintage Zippo brassy gold engraved Elby's Big Boy Restaurant employee lighter that was from July of 1991. And while I was researching this, I learned a lot about Zippo lighters. On the bottom of each Zippo lighter, there's a series of numbers that correspond with the month and the year that it was made. And the reason why I know that is because when I was going through the sold comparable listings on eBay, a lot of them had that date. I don't know if it's important for Zippo lovers or Zippo collectors, but I did include it. And it also had initials on the front of it. It did have some rusting and oxidation to it, but I listed it for $7.99 on a five-day auction. It immediately got one bid within a half an hour of it being listed. It didn't get any other bids, but I was happy with that price. And the customer did pay for it right away when the auction ended. So I was very happy with that free to me, monogrammed and pretty rusty lighter. Next is a wet seal black and floral scoop neck blouse. This came out of My America's Thrift Supply micro bale and it sold for $11.99. That was my full asking price. Another free to me item, this was a set of two new open box Chamberlain three button remote garage openers. My mom purchased these for her garage door opener, but they did not work and it was past the time that she could return them. So she gave them to me and they sold for $20. And I think that these sold within a week of me listing them. And then the last item to sell was another free to me item. It was a Vasaret 100% nylon nude silky tailored camisole tank top. It was a size extra large and it sold for $9.50. So of my 19 sales on eBay, I had $294.95 in sales. I made a shipping profit of $40.66 because I charged the customer a little bit more than what I pay through eBay's discounted shipping. There was $74.14 in fees, giving me a profit of $261.47. And my average sales price for each item that sold was $15.52. And now for my total numbers where I had 44 sales from October 16th through October 31st of 2022, $836.45 in sales, $162.85 in fees. This does include the free shipping that I offered on Mercari and also the shipping discounts on Poshmark. 
My cost of goods this time was $149.08, giving me a net profit of $524.52. And my cost of goods for each item that sold was $3.39. I did sell a lot of free to me items, so that's why that number is a little bit lower than $4, which is exactly where I like to keep it. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you're not subscribed and you like to see what sold on the various platforms, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button. We would love to have you here. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you leave if you enjoyed watching it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.